At the beginning of the 19th century, scientists suspected that species changed over time and that all species could be traced back to a common ancestor. In 1836, Darwin drew a sketch explaining these two radical ideas. Darwin claimed that only one life form existed at the beginning of evolution. Over time, it diversified into multiple species. Throughout history, many species became extinct, but some are still around today. This type of evolution is depicted by a phylogenetic tree. Previously, scientists collected specimens of species and studied their characteristics. They hypothesized that species with similar characteristics diversified recently, whereas dissimilar species diversified some time ago. This was a laborious way to generate phylogenetic trees. Nowadays, evolutionary biologists compare species using DNA sequencing. When organisms evolve, their DNA sequences accumulate mutations. The differences between the DNA sequences of pairs of species indicate when they diverged. Now we have a phylogenetic tree of many species on Earth, the tree of life. The phylogenetic tree of life, however, does not explain its own evolution. Why did some branches become extinct while others flourished? Many hypotheses were proposed, but until George Andy Yule's work in the 1920s, few had been tested on phylogenetic trees. To do this, a mathematical model for evolution is required. Mathematically, phylogenetic trees have two main components, branching times and overall balance. By varying the branching times, we can stretch or compress the evolutionary time. By varying the balance, the trees become skewed or more regular. The timing and balance of phylogenetic trees can be depicted as clocks. Throughout time, each existing species has two clocks, one describing its tendency towards extinction, the other its tendency to speciate. Many factors influence these clocks. For example, global warming might accelerate a species extinction clock, so they become extinct. This may create evolutionary space for another species, whose speciation clock accelerates. Climate and geography affect speciation and extinction. For example, in both desert and arctic conditions, the speciation clock is slow, whereas in the tropics, it runs faster. Traits including body size may affect the evolutionary clock. Bats have evolved far faster than elephants. Species diversity is an important factor. Does the presence of similar species spur diversification or slow it down? But modern phylogenetic trees are created from DNA records, so extinct species do not appear. And fossil records reveal only a small fraction of extinct species. So, how can we comment on the extinction clock without seeing an extinction? We can model the effect of the extinct species on the existing species to mathematically infer the extinction clock speed and predict the total number of extinct species. One hypothesis claims that diversity slows down diversification as species fill the available niches, preventing the emergence of new species. Another hypothesis claims that diversity enhances diversification as diverse species create new niches, providing more evolutionary space for the emergence of new species. The concept of diversity, however, is not uniquely defined. Using network science, we can combine both views into an evolutionary model. Statistical inference helps find the mathematical model that best explains the observed phylogenetic tree. Tuning the model ensures that the tree it produces replicates the actual phylogenetic tree. CostNet researchers have developed a model to test evolutionary hypotheses. Its application revealed that simple diversity can slow down the speciation clock, whereas phylogenetic diversity spurs diversification. It seems that both evolutionary hypotheses are correct. The cost action CostNet consists of a collaboration of more than 500 researchers across 34 countries and is funded by the EU to carry out research into network data science. Our research is crucial to understanding and controlling infectious diseases, but also the stability of global financial networks, novel drug targets and genetic networks, underreporting in arms trade networks, as well as developing species diversification models to investigate evolutionary hypotheses.